So good afternoon, everyone. This is Shihan from New Venture Corporation. We are the organizer of the webinar today. Welcome aboard. So according to the Generation Development Plan 2020 to 2030, Malaysia government is aiming to boost the country's share of renewables in the power mix to 20% by 2025. And it is estimated that Malaysia's solar market is, is expected to recover and see stronger growth in the upcoming years. So therefore, regarding to this market focus, uh, during this webinar, our speakers will give their opinions and interpretations on the topic of solar opportunities shining in Malaysia, moving towards a promising green future. So now I would like to give a brief introduction uh, and a big welcome to our speakers for today. So uh, they are Ms. Camila Kasim. She's the partner of Ramad Lim and Partners. And she's the head of the firm's projects unit under the projects and international arbitration department and also has the energy infrastructure and projects practice in the firm. Her areas of practice include con contentious and non-contentious matters relating to infrastructure projects in Asia. And next we have Mr. Bu Ting Gan. He's the CEO of Leader Energy, and he's an electrical engineering by training, started his career as transmission project engineer in the National Electricity Board of Malaysia, which is now known as TMB. And he was responsible for the implementation of high voltage transmission line and the ground cable and sub substation projects. Uh, Mr. Gan now is the CEO of Leader Energy, which is the uh, privately owned uh, investment company from Malaysia and he's responsible for the development and operation of power transmission and generation projects, including high voltage substations, transmission lines, thermal power plants, small hydro power plants, rooftop solar, large scale solar farms, and onshore and offshore wind farms. And next we have Mr. KK Kong. And Mr. KK Kong is uh, currently the managing director of Maco Engineering. He's a sustainable and energy development authority, a certified grade connected photovoltaic GCPV designer. And he also involves in many commercial and industrial uh, rooftop solar projects. He also experienced, he's also experienced in bond financing, engagement with owners, developers, investors, lenders, rating agency, authorities, EPC, and other stakeholders from small solar farm to utility scale, large scale solar farm. And next we have Ms. Bella, Bella Jo. Uh, Ms. Bella uh, joined Arctech as the regional manager of Malaysia and then expanded her responsibility to more countries, including Singapore, the Philippines, and Indonesia. She has more than six years of experience <clears throat> in the PV industry and another four years in international trading with travels between more than 20 countries. And she is also familiar with the local market situation and she is now the SEA regional manager APC of Arctech. And next we have uh, Ms. Spencer Xu. Uh, Ms. Spencer graduated, uh, Ms. Spencer is the PV solution engineer from Goodby and she graduated from the University of Melbourne is the, uh, and uh, she started her PV industry career in Australia. And now she's focusing on providing differentiated and custom, custom, customized PV system solutions. And she devoted herself into the renewable energy industry because her, because of her understanding and responsibility for environment protection. And uh, last but not least, we have Mr. Kim Du Chang. Uh, he is the technical and service manager from Jingo Solar APC. And he has over 10 years of experience in energy included over five years in the solar power sectors. So uh, for today's webinar, we will first start with a 10 minute speech given by Ms. Bella Zhou. Uh, follow, following with another plenary speech given by Ms. Spencer Xu, and then we will start a panel discussion which will be moderated by Ms. Camila Kasim and participating by Mr. Bu Hinga, Mr. Kege Kong, um, Bella Spencer, and Mr. Kim Du Chang. And after that, we will have another 10 minutes plenary speech delivering by Mr. Kim. And the organizer of today's webinar, uh, New Venture Corporation, we are dedicated to supporting key investors and developers for successful development and investment in Asia-Pacific Asia renewable energy sector. Our footprints cover Asia-Pacific countries such as Vietnam, Philippines, Thailand, China, Myanmar, Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, and some Middle East countries. 
And last, one last thing before starting the webinar, uh, I would like to introduce our attendees with some housekeeping notes. Uh, if you experience any technical issues or you have any questions for our speakers, please do feel free to use the Q&A box. And also we will share the presentation slides as well as the webinar recordings with all of you by next week through your registration email. So first session, let's go ahead and start the first session for today. Uh, I will hand the mic to Ms. Bella Jo. Welcome. Hi, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Just give me a second to share my PT slide. Okay, I think I only have 10 minutes, so I'm gonna make this brief and uh, quick for anyone who want to further discuss in more details, I uh, left my personal contact number on my last slide. You can screen capture and reach out me uh, after this. Active our company was established in the year 2009 and headquartered in Kunshan, China. But this one not for mineral real estate is quite close to Shanghai. And uh, till end of 2020, the company has accumulated installation of over 32 gigawatt to more than 40 countries. Uh, over all those years of development, the company quite uh, devoted and emphasized in the development of a solar structure from the very beginning. And uh, since 2016, uh, we made ourselves as the number one supplier in APEC region and uh, continually remain that position for several years. And the company is also publicly listed since uh, 2020. Here's some idea of how we stand in the market. Uh, firstly, globally, uh, it's also number of 2020. The company took around 8% of market share and ranked uh, top four in the global uh, tracker market. And in our Asian Pacific region, we took uh, around 35 market share. And uh, oh, this one, this sign is ranked number one for several years since 2016. Uh, this actually quite uh, largely show how the market acknowledge Arctic as a supplier for solar structure and how we are doing with our uh, solution quality and commitment. Here's some global presence, like uh, basically we have a service center or representative office in all the major regions. Here for me personally, I'm based in KL, Malaysia. And uh, the company is quite emphasized on the uh, development of its research and uh, invention. So till now we have uh, over 240 patents. And uh, we are also fully licensed with all the essential and existing international certification. For those who might know something about uh, solar structure and especially tracker, you might know there that uh, the internal test is quite essential. And uh, there are five levels of uh, different rental tests and Arctic is the only one globally who can reach the sixth level of test and simulation. And uh, meanwhile, we are also the only one to own its own internal test laboratory, which largely uh, helps us to provide even better solution to our clients to ensure even lower LCOE and higher return of investment and just also for more stable and advanced uh, solutions. This also shows largely how we are different from our competitors. 
uh, some references of the production line. Basically, now our manufacturing base is located in Changzhou, Jiangsu province, and we are having expansion coming along the way, which will be uh, in full production this year. After that, the capacity will be doubled. Some references of what we have done in this region, and those are on some typical projects. Like you can see in Malaysia, we have installed around 200 megawatt of fixed uh, projects. And for tracker, we have one, 116. Uh, that is 2B, Sky Smart 2. It's under construction. Uh, for this, I will explain more on my last few slides later on. Okay, uh, what we are doing exactly, except for tracker, of course, we are also doing fixed structure. Uh, actually, fixed is still the mainstream, especially in Malaysia, people still go with uh, fixed uh, for more. And also some BIPV car park solution. Uh, for those people who are not very familiar of how tracker works and what are the types available over there, and here's some uh, example. For fixed structure, as the description is fixed, it's no adjustment. And there are something in the middle, it's called adjustable but fixed tight structure. Uh, this one is more used in high altitude regions like in Russia, in northern part of Europe, because the solar radiation angle varies bigly to different seasons. So they adjust seasonally. And then it's the tracking system, like in the uh, in map shown below. Uh, we track the sun from the early morning till sunset to try to place the module in the perfect, the most suitable angle to observe more solar radiation and generate more power. Hence, we can reach our purpose of uh, giving higher energy output and uh, lower LCOE and eventually to achieve better and the max maximum uh, return of investment. You can see from the right side uh, image, the extra energy output. And uh, specifically for our region in Malaysia, what uh, is the additional output we can give? Uh, actually, it's uh, according to our study, it's around 10 to 30% uh, comparing to uh, fixed installation. Uh, some references of what uh, we can offer. This is an uh, image of a 2P, uh, SkySmart 2, which is also what we use in the uh, Malaysian tra tracker project. You can see it's two pieces of module in portrait, and uh, they are using multi point drive. And the next one, skyline, is one P. You can see it's only one piece of module. That is longer, it's longer, and the tooth is shorter. They all come with AI solution, with backtracking strategies, smart monitoring, etc. those functions to enable that we achieve the best energy output. Okay. Um, as I said, we are for the market mainstream, people are still going with fixed because of multiple reasons. And uh, there are single pills, dual pills, vertical or horizontal layout. Uh, fixed structure is most simple and fast, and it can fit in all kinds of land types. You can see in this picture, it's a uh, solar farm in Guizhou. It's very hilly, I still can fit in. Some uh, case example, what we did in Malaysia. Uh, this is the case I mentioned that now we are installing. You can see from the map, it's very close to area in Terragano and uh, that location always comes with seasonal floods and very close to say around 300 meters. So the design is also have to be suitable for the local condition. You can see it's rise up, the pulse is rise up for uh, avoiding floods. And uh, you can see 
it's using bifacial module. Uh, the capacity is 116 megawatt. It's coming into CLD days. And uh, for more, there are fixed uh, structure. It can be used in all kinds of land types. You can see uh, the first one, UITM project is very flat. And the next one, Terra, it's with much more complicated uh, land uh, condition, but still can fit in. These are all come uh, around the 60 megawatt beam. And more reference pictures. Okay. Okay, I think my time is uh, done. Okay, there is my email and my WhatsApp number. For those who are interested in no more, you can just reach out. Thank you very much. I will just stop my sharing. Yeah, thank you, Bella. And if anyone has any questions, um, please also contact Bella through her email that was showing on the slides just now. And uh, thank you for your informative speech. And now let's welcome the second speaker of today, Ms. Spencer Xu from Goodwee. Hello, Spencer. Hello, everyone. Just a second. Uh, can you see my sharing? Yeah, looks good. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Spencer, a uh, solution engineer from Goodway Solar Academy. I'm now supporting Australia and Southeast Asia for the PV system solutions. Today, I'm glad to introduce to you Goodway's commercial and industrial solution and some applications in Southeast Asia. So today's sharing will be carried out from the following four aspects. First of all, please allow me to give a brief introduction of Goodway. Goodway is a global leading inverter manufacturer, but we are actually more than that. Our vision is to create a new era of the smart energy. For example, we've installed over 2 million units of inverters and help save over 26 million tons of carbon dioxide. When we start our smart energy journey since 2010, in the past 10 years, we've developed in a dramatic speed and become a famous brand trusted by customers. And we were listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange in the 2020, and our business is keep expanding and growing. As a global company, we have branches, sales and service centers all over the world so that all our clients can be served in time. And we also have two R&D centers and two factories to ensure the product innovation as well as the production and delivery. As a well-known inverter manufacturer, we has won many awards. Um, for example, Goodwe is the only solar inverter manufacturer to win the TUB Ringline All Quality Matters Award for six consecutive years. And we were also awarded by Wood Makens um, for the number, world's number one hybrid storage inverter supplier. Next, let's look at some typical commercial and industrial system solutions and applications. Um, here we can see this is the system that's specialized for the commercial rooftops. So in this system, uh, the generated solar power will be consumed by the loads first, and then the rest power will be fed into the grid. So in the commercial and industrial scenarios, normally we will have multiple inverters. So uh, we can use an SEC 1000 here, which is a communication box for the load consumption monitoring and also can export do the export power limit control. Then we also offers a free online monitoring platform, which is the same portal. And it is short for the smart energy management system. 
is a smart tool to help our customers monitor their power plants in a visualized way, and it can help the maintenance. And we also offer system solutions for some low voltage applications, for example, in Latin America and Southeast Asia. And in the commercial, large commercial projects, we also offer um, products and system solutions for the high voltage scenario. In the high voltage system, um, the inverter will not be connected to the loads first, but it will be connected to a transformer instead. And then it will be connected to the high voltage, voltage uh, distribution network. And for the communication methods, we can choose the PLC communication, which is the power line communication to save the cable investment. Here we can see uh, it's our main products for the commercial and industrial applications from 25 to 136 kilowatt. Um, we have the SMT servers that have three MPVTs ranging from 25 to 30, uh, 36 kilowatt and the MT series, which has four MPVTs, and it also offers both the low voltage and the high voltage models. And we also have the HT series works from 73 to 136 kilowatt. And good with uh, commercial and industrial products are featured with the full operation at 50 degree and has a superior performance in the DC oversizing and AC overloading. Um, and it is integrated with the arc forge circuit interpreter and power line communication, uh, which can, can also be chosen as an optional choice. And we also have an ultimate high power inverter, which is the HT1500 volt servers. And it is specially designed for the large commercial and industrial and also the utility projects. So this model is fully compatible with the mainstream high power modules, such as the 182 and the 210 millimeter PV modules. And for, for this, we will discuss this later. And the H HT uh, 1500 volt series also offers the second generation power line communication, as well as the smart IV curve diagnosis and the SVG functions. Here we can see is our uh, utility scale inverters. So here we have the special model for the KN series. So KN is specially designed for the 210 millimeter PV module. And the main difference is that the KN series will have six MPPT and each MPPT have three strings. So, and also each string has a maximum 20 ampere input current so it can fit in the large current train of the PV modules. Now let's look in details how good we inverters to be compatible with the high current and bifacial modules. As we know, there's an evolution of the PV modules with larger solar cell size and also the higher power level, which brings the challenges for the whole PV industry. For the inverter manufacturer, um, we need to increase the maximum input current as well as the maximum short circuit current to be compatible with the high power PV modules. As we can see, the 182 millimeter wafers are widely used in the utility scale power plants and also for some commercial rooftops. Our inverter could be fully adapted to 182 millimeter PV modules. We can see that like the mainstream 182 millimeter manufacturers has a short circuit current for about 13 to 14 ampere. And we found that even uh, the Jinko that has the largest short circuit current of 14.9 uh, ampere is below 15 ampere while our inverter can support maximum 15 ampere input current per string. So um, we've already been, um, uh, so we are already fully adapted to the 182 millimeter modules.
And in the commercial and industrial application, our solution to connect with the 210 millimeter mod KV module is to connect one string for each MPVTs so that we can have a maximum input current of 30 ampere. Here, let's take the Trina Vertex 600 volt and good with 120 kilowatt HD as an example. The short circuit current of the Trina Vertex is 18.5 and the open circuit current is 41.5 at STC. After some calculation, we found that we have 22 PV modules per string and 12 strings are connected. Here, we need to pay attention that we will suggest to connect the PV string to the even strings because um, we have upgraded the software of our MPVTs. So the even string connection won't affect our monitoring results. Well, for the utility projects, as mentioned before, we have the special version for the KNHT. So the string current of uh, KNHT will be 20 ampere per string. So with a three string designs, most clients, we have the concern that if we need an external fuse to protect, to prevent that two strings current backfeed to one string, well, the KN still use a new no, no fuse design to solve this problem. It is equipped with an intelligent uh, DC trip switch, which can automatically trip the DC switch when the overcurrent failure happens. So this DC switch can receive the trip signal from the inverter DSP to shut down the DC circuit when the emergency happens. So um, our new model can perfectly match the 210 millimeter PV modules. Next, next, let's look at some product features of Goodwe. Goodwe inverter can adapt to a multiple environment. Um, for example, for the multi-angle rooftops, we have up to 12 MPVTs. So it is very flexible for the system designs operation at high temperature and can also adapt to the coastal areas because um, our HT series is certi certified with the C5 protection level. And for the lightning prone area, uh, we have the integrated type one SPD on the DC side, um, which is available to be chosen. As we've mentioned, uh, Goodwin Inverter has a good heat dissipation performance because we have very reasonable heat dissipation paths and it is um, equipped with the six powerful uh, NMB fans. Um, as we know, there's a hazard called the arc failure. It could result in the fire accidents and uh, Goodwin products has an optional choice for the arc failure protection with the a second generation AFCI protection level and it is fully compli comply with the UL and IEC standards. Smart IV curve diagnosis is um, another useful tool for the operation and the maintenance for large commercial and industrial and utility projects. Um, for the um, smart IV curve diagnosis, it can support up to 20 error types and it can save the detection time down to the minutes level. So it is more efficient both in time and cost. And here is our NTPID function for the good, good way inverters. Um, so in the evenings, the anti-PID function will automatically be triggered and the inverter will be added a reverse 600 volt voltage between the module selective and the PE to repair the PID problems happened during the daytime so that um, we can repair the PID, PID um, effect to bring our customers more yielding. And good week commercial products also can support the wide branch connection to help to save the DC cable investment. 
we also offers a flexible configuration methods. Um, we can either choose the LCD screen or using the SolarGo app um, via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi so that we can do the configurations through our smartphones. But now let's have a look at how good we inverters ensure reliability and safety. Uh, so to ensure our products have a long life cycle, we have diverse tests both internally and externally. Um, for example, we have the IP protection test conducted by the TUV, and we also have a very strict quality management procedure in factory. As you can see through the picture, Scooby has a strict control and protection line. We have a self-developed ATS test to make sure that our inverter is 100% ready before shipment. And an aging test ensures our inverter are reliable in the extreme hot weather conditions. So in the end, let's have a look at some case we've done in the Southeast Asia. Here is a project we've done in India. And we've also helped the, the Siemens in India for uh, using our MT series. Okay, thank you. That's all for my speech. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer, for your presentation. And now it's time to start the panel discussion session for today. Uh, so the opportunity is shining in Malaysia, moving towards a promising green future. So then uh, as introduced, our moderator will be Ms. Camila Kasim. And for the panelists, we are very glad to have Mr. Bu Hingan, Mr. Keke Kong, uh, Ms. Bella, Ms. Spencer, and Mr. Kian to join us. Um. Hello and welcome. Uh, can you hear my voice, uh, Shihan, everybody? Yeah, very clear. Yeah, so I can hear yes. you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Camila um, and your moderator today. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us today. And um, hopefully, as far as a renewable energy in Malaysia, you will leave the webinar today greener and shinier. Okay, by the way, I am from Marang, Bella. I didn't know there's a big solar farm in Marang, Trunganu. So when I go back, I must check the solar farm. I yeah, have you can, no you can idea. Just, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, the talk today is quite uh, timely, actually, as uh, Malaysia, as recently as December last year, uh, recently launched a roadmap um, uh, to formulate a framework aimed at uh, achieving 31%. Uh, um, renewable energy share in the national capacity mix uh, by 2025, not very long, yeah, three years more. Uh, and also to attain decarbonization uh, of the electric sector by uh, 2035, all right? Um, it is called my RER. Perhaps uh, I could trouble Mr. Gunn to perhaps you know, give a, a brief overview of this, my uh, RER. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, I'm done. Uh, I will try to share some, uh, take a few minutes of my time to just brief uh, what is in this roadmap uh, of uh, the, that is launched by basically Ministry of uh, Energy and Natural Resources on the 30th, 30th of uh, December, which is just uh, almost end of last year. Okay, I am Gan, uh, I am from Leader Energy uh, Group. Leader Energy Group actually is a relatively young company, only about 28 years. Uh, we are a fully owned Malaysian company, uh, but having footprint uh, in the whole Southeast Asia and including Taiwan. Currently, our projects are ranging from all the way from uh, Taiwan in the north uh, to Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, Malaysia, and Indonesia, and Singapore. 
So we have solar projects everywhere. And uh, we have started actually with some thermal plants and transmission line, but now we are fully focusing into uh, renewable energy in hydro, in wind, and also mostly in solar. Uh, we come to talk about this uh, renewable energy roadmap that's launched by the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources on 30th of December. Uh, I, will, I will basically just take a few minutes just to tell what is it in there. Uh, basically, the, 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 the framework uh, have four major pillars. Uh, being solar is the most important one. Uh, the other three elements are the bioenergy, hydro, and also new solution and resources. And uh, there are four enablers. Uh, one is leveraging on the future proving electricity market for RE opportunities. Uh, five, uh, second thing is improved access to the financing. Um, for most of the solar developers in Malaysia, uh, will understand that financing is one of the most challenging part in, uh, in Malaysia to get financing for all the solar projects in Malaysia. Uh, number three is uh, human capital inf and infrastructure. And number four, increasing system flexibility. In coming up with this framework, the, basically the, the government ministry come up with the three main pillars. Uh, that is, they are in, in order to deliver the reliable and green power to all, they are looking into environmental targets and policies. They are looking into system securities and also make sure that it's affordable and there's economic benefits for everybody. These are the 31% that uh, Amila is talking about. Currently, in a baseline on 2020, there are 8,450 megawatt of renewable energy consisting of energy mix of 23%. This 8,450 megawatt actually includes a large scale, so a large scale hydro uh, like Pakun and, uh, and uh, Kenyang power, uh, hydro plant and things like that. Uh, so going forward, there are two lines here you can, you can see. One is BAU, business as usual. If it's business growth as, as currently as uh, without any additional incentive, uh, the, the ministry expected by 2025, the energy mix of RE will be only about 29%. There is a growth of to 11,000 megawatt uh, of renewable energy. But with the additional incentive coming up by the ministry, the RE mix of, uh, the mix of RE will form about 31%. There is additional 12,916 megawatt. And by 2030, they hope that the RE mix will increase to 40%. There is an additional of almost 18,000 megawatt of renewable energy. So what are the sources of the potential of renewable energy in Malaysia? Uh, as you can see, the largest being the solar. Solar consisting of 269 gigawatt. There is 269,000 megawatt of solar potential. And there are some hydros, bio, biomass, bioenergies, biogas, small hydros, and geothermal. But of course, as you can see, the majority of it actually is solar. And the peninsula has the biggest uh, potential of 137 uh, gigawatt of solar potential. Sabah is another state that is almost 100, 100 gigawatt. And uh, Sarawak, Due to the lower irradiance, the potential of solar energy in Sarawak is a little bit less. And in order to achieve the target uh, by 2025, uh, that is set by the ministry, these are the new potential of the renewable energy required to achieve this 12,916 megawatt to increase the RE shares uh, mixed to 31%. Uh, we are looking at another 4,700 a megawatt of uh, solar projects by 2025, which is not too far away. Now it's already 2022. So we are looking at another three to four years times. We have to increase another 4,700 megawatt. So what are the actions that the government is doing in order to achieve this target? Uh, they, they want to re review the NEM. NEM is the net energy metering that is currently 
the version three, we have NEM one, NEM two, now is NEM 3.0, uh, the program for rooftop solar and off-take tariff. Actually, they are trying to rebalance the tariff. Uh, in, actually, it's going to be reduce the tariff a little bit. The, they are also looking into a new business model. Uh, in, in addition to large-scale solar, LSS is a large-scale solar farm and NEM program. They are looking into this corporate PPA and third-party assets. This is something that developer like us has been waiting for a long time. Because we hope that you know uh, we can also develop solar farms for uh, private customers directly uh, without uh, now everything all the solar farms we have to sell the power to PNB uh, the off taker is the utility but with this corporate PPA then you can actually sell to private customers uh, the factories who are who wants renewable energy and the other important factor that is a renewable energy certificate. The, something like a carbon carbon credit that you can actually sell the renewable energy as a unit, 1,000 kilowatt hour of uh, new, renewable energy is, is considered as one unit of REC that you can actually sell this green certificate, green attributes to actually to, to reduce your carbon footprint. Of course, they want to uh, look into this last case solar option, uh, focusing more into floating solar and the technologies that yield less lands so that there will be less trees being chopped down for the large scale solar farms. So these are the initiatives, some of the initiatives the ministries are taking in order to achieve the target in 2025. The target that is set in 2035, that is to increase by 40%. So we are looking at additional 7,000 over a megawatt of solar farms that is going to come, come on, on, online. And in order to do that, they again they are, they want to look into uh, auction the of the last case solar. Uh, they're looking to new technologies, advances, and global practices. Things like storage, things like the uh, other other what you call it, uh, uh, technology that is developing, and the newer newer modules and other other advancement in the renewable energy sector. Of course. They want to take look more into a direct corporate PPAs, enhance the rooftop programs, and also the encourage increase the participation of government agency in the government solar rooftop program. For those who know the NEM, the Net Energy Metering Scheme under 3.0, there are three categories. One is the residential, uh, and the second one is CNI, the commercial industrial, and the third one is the government. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the least take-up rate among the three is the government agency. At the moment, it's only a slightly about 20% take-up compared to the quota of 100 megawatt. So there are not so encouraging signs from the government agency. So the government now actually wants to encourage more and more of these government agencies to take up, uh, to put in more solar panels onto their rooftop. So basically, this is a very quick summary of what is in the roadmap uh, that is being launched on 30th December. Thank you very much. Amina, back to you. Let me start. Thank you very much, Mr. Gan. That's very, very useful. You know, the fact you take time uh, because my RER is about 198 pages, but you have managed to <laughs> shrink it in a very useful and, and i try to do it in two minutes <laughs> <laughs> compatible <laughs> it's very impressive mr gun uh mr kong would you like to uh add anything um to what's yeah. happening in malaysia at the moment right um is, is my voice uh, clear is yes, yes very clear yes, very clear mr kong right. thank you gun uh, and thank you uh, camilla you know uh, for sharing what is happening uh, in Malaysia to uh, all our peers, you know. I guess a lot of uh, audience here are overseas, you know. So uh, probably I can jump into a uh, sharing a little bit on the, what uh, Mr. Gan has uh, mentioned. The, the Other than the solar farm, you know, what are the other opportunities in, 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 in Malaysia? Uh, where the uh, rooftop um, that has been covered is um, 
for the rooftop market in Malaysia, we have this uh, NEM 3.0 that is uh, three category for the residential market, 100 mega, uh, the NEM government, which is the government, 100 mega. So uh, Mr. Gan and myself is looking that, you know, uh, hopefully the government is going to, to uh, be the leader and pioneer, you know, and adoption of all this, you know. So the Nova uh, is uh, for CNI market. So uh, as per Mr. Dunn that has mentioned, you know, um, the, the tick up rate is about 20% only by the government uh, offices, the, the building, government building. So uh, we look forward for more uh, program that will uh, increase this adoption, lead by examples, hopefully, our Malaysia governments. So as for residential market, is about 25% uh, uptake on the quota that has been uh, uh, located. So while the uh, while the this Nova, which is the CNI, generally in our industry we call it a commercial industrial. So uh, it's more than fifty percent uh, uptake. So it's a uh, very encouraging. So, and the program that available in Malaysia have two. One is, uh, we call it PPA, and the other one is RF purchase. The PPA means uh, that uh, uh, companies uh, can be investors and engage uh, uh, solar companies, uh, service provider companies like us, like Mr. Gan, can engage uh, Marco Solar. Uh, my companies uh, to help him to install in uh, the premise of the off ticker, uh, the site owner, where they sell uh, electricity to, to them. So this is allowed um, in Malaysia, while the other program is uh, purely on um, uh, the site owner will pay um, as an outright purchase their own and they use the electricity uh, directly then for themselves. So we look forward uh, the new program uh, um, actually looking into in the next few years, you know, to allow something like Vietnam is doing the offsite uh, PPA or third party access kind of stuff. Uh, we are pretty excited as an industry players uh, uh, to, to look forward to those kind of uh, program uh, to be implemented in Malaysia. Yeah, um, that's all my sharing. Uh, so probably, um, Kamila, you can take over. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Kong. All right. Um, anything else you want to add, uh, Mr. Gan, as far as uh, Malaysia is concerned? All right. Because um, uh, right now, uh, all the uh, laws or regulatory uh, framework uh, in Malaysia will be based on the guideline issued by our regulator, that is the Energy Commission uh, Malaysia. All right, there are a few uh, guidelines issued uh, by the EC, for example, solar consumption, uh, self-consumption, and also NEM. So far, um, the, uh, uh, the emphasis is only on rooftop. So right now, as Mr. Gunn rightly pointed out just now, I'm very, very happy to see that they're allowing uh, floating uh, solar. All right, they're allowing the mounted uh, ground uh, solar because initially um, for ground mounted or any other uh, way or uh, other premises, it has to get express permission from the uh, Energy Commission. So we hope there's a lot of uh, capacity to be installed <laughs> to meet 2025 uh, aim. <laughs> All right. Um, but anyway, we can ask, uh, you can ask uh, more questions on the uh, NEM uh, or um, fit in tariff in Malaysia is not really applicable to solar. So, you know, but anything on NEM um, that you wish to know, let us, uh, let us know, uh, question uh, large scale solar as well. And I am actually right now advising, hopefully, fingers crossed, first corporate PPA solar in Malaysia. Hopefully this uh, will happen. Um, okay, um, next, um, I see one of the questions just now that according to a study in Malaysia, tracker is not suitable in Malaysia. 
so perhaps Bella, um, uh, if you could uh, address uh, what we what would be more suitable uh, for Malaysia uh, market tracker or fixed uh, structure? And if we're going for tracker, I think uh, a tracker is okay. <laughs> I'm jumping the question, but I think mm -hmm. technically that I'm very challenged. You can deal with that. What is the uh, pros and cons of the um, um, 1P or 2P solution uh, under the local uh, condition? Um, you know, under what circumstances, how, you know, developers should uh, choose? Thank you, Bella. Okay, uh, thank you for your question. Yeah, earlier someone asked in the Room, saying like in Malaysian condition, we have comparing to some, some other countries, people think we have more cloudy days and more raining days. Actually, the tracker system uh, during its r and and all those years development, we have more mature uh, solution. We have integrated with uh, AI function and we have backtracking, we have smart monitoring and the cloud platform, et cetera, all those uh, uh, technology, all those uh, new patents, new development to uh, enable us to provide, uh, um, to maximize the energy yield. And uh, this, despite all those conditions in this region, we still can get additionally around 10 to 30% of the uh, extra output compared to using fixed installation. And uh, for your just now question about, okay, uh, in this region, how should we choose? If we are planning a, a soft farm, how do we choose? Tracker or fixed and among tracker, there are two P solution and one P solution. How should we make decisions to maximize the profit of doing such a soft farm? Uh, there are, Basically, it will be depend on the uh, set condition, of course. And uh, as long as as long as you have enough land, and uh, it comes with more moderate terrain, and uh, also if the soil condition allows, of all the all those factors, we will have to study and uh, evaluate and advise you what your choice is. So, if those conditions allow then yes, of course, definitely tracker would be the best solution. It brings better return of investment. And that's why we are doing this after all is there. And then of course, there are some conditions that we don't allow to uh, deploy tracker. If sometimes the developers, they don't have much choice on, on the land. They have quite limited land size and then Sometimes, yeah, now people are using more palm oil plantation. Sometimes it's hilly with heavy terrain slope and uh, some soil condition is very, very uh, poor. Like we are facing some, uh, so it's only at a later stage, they find out the soil is very soft, et cetera. So after those study and evaluation, if, we, uh, if tracker cannot work, then we would do fixed solution. It's the most simple and fast, and it would suit for all kinds of land type. And, but yes, of course, then if you go with fixed, it's simple, but it would uh, waste some solar resources and it would have lower return of investment in the whole lifespan of a solar farm. And let's talk back about use uh, if condition if everything allows we are going with the tracker solution and among those choices within tracker how should we choose then there are uh, just as, as I just showed you in my previous creativity slide you can see the image of the 2p our uh, sky smart team and the 1p skyline the differences basically 1P is one module in portrait. The good thing is it's shorter. It's shorter and the design, the uh, deployment, everything is the most simple and hence it's cheaper. System-wise it's cheaper. Uh, but on the other hand, it will be longer. Then if it's longer, which means we would require the land to be comparatively more flat 
and then we would have more post. So sometimes when you are having uh, a site that with more difficult foundation design, if you wanna uh, save money on the earthwork and on the installation of the post, then maybe if using 1P, you would have more cost on the installation, but the system-wise is cheaper. Then talking about the 2P, Sky Smart 2, which is what we used in the Maran project. Uh, this one, it's taller and uh, uh, but by length, it's shorter. So it, it's better to use to fit in slightly underrated uh, terrain, which sometimes, which all is like more, more often we are facing in Malaysia because they are using more palm oil plantation. Sometimes it's more or less come with a little bit of terrain slope. And also it comes with less post. So if you are having a more difficult foundation design, like also said with the Marin project, because the site is very close to the sea, only a few hundred meters from the sea, very coastal, and the soil is comparatively soft and it has seasonal flood. All those factors combined, less post would uh, save on the installation, I mean, for the post part. And uh, so all those factors combined, we would help to make the evaluation study and the tail the developer, the EPC, uh, what are the choices and making each choice what the pros and cons. Basically it would have to be depend on the condition. Uh, thank you very much, Arabella. All right, when I first started uh, advising on the uh, solar projects, I think it's the first large scale solar. Um, initially uh, supposed to be between government to government, Malaysia and uh, that's one other country. Um, uh, you know, you need plenty of land, all right? When initially, you know, the Malaysia is very, very small. I would can't afford to, you know, offer land uh, for solar and, you know, destroy our jungle that Mr. Gun said just now. All right, we probably, we need other things to do. But uh, recently I know that, you know, um, uh, the technology has managed to deal with the uh, land. You need smaller land right now from, uh, DC to AC. Uh, so perhaps uh, further to the tracker that Bella uh, spoke about mm -hmm. just now to deal with the issue of you know how much uh, land required. Okay, perhaps uh, Spencer, uh, you could uh, talk um, how to maximize uh, uh, the project, you know, uh, efficiency. And after you're done, Perhaps uh, Kian can follow up with the uh, future trends and technology among others to uh, deal with you know, challenges that we are facing, small countries like Malaysia, for example. Uh, Spencer, you want to start first? Yes, uh, thank you for your question. Um, and uh, thank you all for your um, preliminary speech. And I believe uh, Malaysia should um, consider to include the active in involvement of all the stakeholders in the policy formulation and also ensuring the strong public as well as the, all the stakeholders to support the and boost the renewable energy. And um, with uh, the falling cost of the installation and the solar system, for example, the larger size and the higher power of the solar panels. And um, it has driven a new trend in the PV industry. So um, higher power um, PV modules benefits for the lower the system cost and then further lower the LCOE, which we know the, is the levelized cost of the energy. And it is uh, one of the major concerns of the investors and could we, as an inverter supplier, um, the technological breakthroughs of our inverters are driven by the PV module development and also the target of lower the LCOE. Uh, so what we do is that we need to lower the system investment and also in the same time increase the system performance. So in other words, we need to bring more yielding for the customers. So 
the most typical um, technological uh, innovation is that we've increased the inverter power level. So uh, in one project, we will there will be fewer inverters needed. So um, it actually helps to lower the uh, initial investment. And from the inverter DC size, um, the maximum DC input voltage are increased. And so it can allow us to put more PV panels connected in one string, um, which can help to save the DC cable investment because uh, we actually need fewer strings. And from the AC side, um, the AC output voltage is also increased accordingly. So it can help us to lower the cable loss as well. Um, another, another technology improvement is that the string inverters are having more integrated protective functions, such as the SVG, NTPID, and the SPD protection. Um, those protection functions uh, not only increase the system safety level, but also can save the cost uh, for the future operation and maintenance. So it can help to lower the LCOE. And I believe in the future, these three inverters can be more multifunctional and also with the um, less cost of the external devices for the maintenance. Um, so that's um, all for, um, about my ideas regarding the um, how to lower the LCOE for the solar systems. Mr. Kian, would you like to, uh, you know, perhaps share the uh, future uh, trends and also uh, technology uh, that would probably, you know, manage all the challenges that we have right now? Yeah, thank you for your question. So generally, uh, Spencer has stated uh, almost uh, correct uh, the, the idea of the new, uh, new, uh, new technology and technology trend for the future, not only in Malaysia, but uh, globally. Um, we are witnessing the trends in PV technology to increase the efficiency of the system. And uh, uh, related to the, your previous question about the limited land area, I think for, the, uh, for Malaysia, for Malaysia, uh, this uh, the country with uh, the very special, uh, special condition the, is, uh, is very low wind speed. I, <laughs> I remember that um, many of my customers in Malaysia, they all state that uh, our country have a very low wind speed. So we don't need to, uh, to, to think more, to think too much about uh, the mechanical properties of the PV panel. So I think in Malaysia, uh, the good way to save land and to improve the LCOE and to increase the IR of the project is to use, uh, first to use the uh, of course, uh, first to use the, the high efficiency equipment like uh, uh, PV panel, new generation, uh, new uh, and inverter high efficiencies. But uh, I also think that uh, the tracker is very, uh, very uh, suitable for Malaysia condition because uh, this the country have very low wind speed. And once uh, you have low wind speed and you have uh, you have enough land. Uh, if you invest uh, in tracker with a high efficiency PV bifacial PV panel, you can improve the the energy use uh, about uh, twenty up to twenty five percent. That's a significant value and uh, can improve uh, uh, IRR significantly. So uh, that's my question. Uh, my uh, my opinion. That's uh, very uh, is quite. Uh, Nothing, no, nothing different with uh, the Panzer and Bella. But uh, additionally, I recommend customer in Malaysia, besides uh, the rooftop project, if you invest in the ground mounted, you should think about uh, the tracker and bifacial, bifacial PV model. Because in Malaysia, as uh, I, I repeat again, in Malaysia, the wind speed is very low and this uh, is uh, the best condition to invest in tracker, yeah. That's yeah. correct. We have tried to do wind farm. Uh, it has never um, has never worked out. <laughs> it's never worked out. Okay, we have a few questions here. I, I'm not very sure whether uh, we have the ability to uh, 
I hope some of the panelists uh, could um, uh, address this. The first question is that with the uh, ongoing pandemic, uh, is supply chain still an issue for supply of inverters to Malaysia? Uh, how long is the expected lead waiting time for supply of inverters in 2022? Quickly, anybody, uh, Mr. Gan, Mr. Kong, or yeah, Bella. Since the question is on inverter, maybe Spencer should answer. Yeah. Uh, how... Spencer, you're on mute. <laughs> oh. This is yeah. the question. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, how long is the expected lead waiting time for supply of uh, inverters in 2022? Uh, okay. So uh, actually, um, I this this um, component shortage. Um, actually affects uh, all the industries, but uh, from good we side, uh, we, we are actually um, trying to uh, make sure all the overseas, um, mar overseas market, like the uh, supply for the international market uh, as our first priority. So we can still make sure the uh, supplier, um, even during this pandemic, our um, international sales haven't been affected. So um, as long as um, we, um, the customers would like to um, have give the um, orders to us, we would make sure to um, give the, to make sure the shipment can be, can be done in time. So, okay. um, yeah. Yeah, I hope the, the you know, that, that addresses the question. And I think the next question is actually for uh, Mr. Gan, Shamila. Hi, Shamila. Um, Shamila said, thank you to all the panelists uh, for detailed presentations. I would like to ask Mr. Gan, uh, solar power is considered lower on the ROI compared to fossil type plants, uh, CCGT, uh, coal-fired, um, uh, presumably due to lower output capacity. What incentives has the Malaysian government taken or plans to take to foster more investment in solar energy, especially when storage remains the biggest challenge to making it uh, commercially viable? Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'll try to answer that. Uh, thank you, Shamila. Um, a lot of this incentive, or rather the government plan, I, I believe uh, already outlined in the roadmap that I presented just now. Uh, as uh, Kongkamila said just now, the report actually is a very thick report. There are a lot of details in there. And unfortunately, due to the time constraint, I'm not able to tell everything. Uh, but of course, bear in mind that solar at the moment is still not a base load uh, power supply source. Uh, that means the uh, source of power from solar is erratic. It depends on the weather uh, and is only available during the daytime. Uh, and when it's cloudy days on raining days, then the, so the power generation will drop. So you still need a thermal plant. At this moment, Malaysia has about 40% on gas, 40% on coal. Uh, so 80% of Malaysian power actually comes from fossil uh, fossil fuel. Uh, so, as you rightly pointed out, uh, battery is the solution, but unfortunately, because of the technology and the cost of battery storage, is still relatively high. Uh, but the, advan the advancement of the technology and the research in the battery storage is improving very, very fast. The, you can see the new technologies coming up, new, even the solar modules, there are newer, newer, higher efficiency solar modules. A higher efficiency for battery storage and a newer medium for storage. So, but that will come. Uh, it's just a matter of when. Uh, it's, it's a definitely coming. Back to the incentive for government. Uh, at this moment, especially for the large scale solar, there is no actually uh, incentive uh, apart from the uh, green tech, uh, from the green tech Malaysia for the certain tax incentive. And uh, some of the East Coast Corridor, they give some uh, investment incentive. 
But apart from that, there is no uh, no more incentive, not like the previous days uh, when FIT, FIT way back in 2011, uh, the, there is a subsidized uh, sort of uh, FIT rate for tariff, but now no more. Now it's actually an open market, open bidding auction. So that is why you see now solar is even cheaper uh, in terms of per kilowatt hour compared to a more traditional thermal plant. Uh, perhaps, uh, um, um, Mr. Gunn, if you could, most probably, uh, if you if you can, all right, talk about the uh, the, the tax uh, incentive, Gita and Gite. Yeah, Gita and Gite. Basically, yeah. basically <laughs> uh, offhand, I, I I I cannot remember the exact, uh, but of course, you have to prove that your your equipment is a uh, is certified by by the. Maida, and then we have this uh, green green tax. Uh, there is also a, a financing incentive where they, they subsidize part of the interest uh, from the government. So these are the maybe Kong. You have more details on the Gita and Gita. I I okay. I'm not there for quite some time already. Thanks, thanks, Gun. So, um, yeah. There are still two more incentives, uh, which is uh, the government is uh, encouraging the adoption of uh, solar. So encouraging corporate to do reinvestment allowance. When you reinvest your profit into uh, purchasing uh, solar uh, yeah. power, so you'll be rewarded uh, a double tax incentive. Means the CA, on top of the CA, you can claim one more time, which is called GITA. Okay, Gita uh, by Maida. So uh, there are some verification process that you need to go through. Um, then of course, uh, we have uh, many, many customers uh, that have successfully got that. Uh, so uh, this program is valid until December next year, December 2023. Uh, so uh, get it before it's uh, gone. So number two, like Mr. Dan had mentioned, uh, uh, there's another GTFS, uh, Green Tax. Uh, this is a GTFS, the financing scheme that the government has uh, subsidizing uh, like 2%, 2 uh, yeah. of, uh, of uh, this, this interest rate. Interest rate. So um, this is less popular because uh, it's quite tedious to, to, to get this. So, but uh, it's there. It's there. Uh, so uh, hopefully that answered uh, the, the audience questions. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Kong. Uh, it's very, very helpful. Um, okay, is there anything else that anybody wants to add? Any other questions from the from the uh, uh, attendees. Um, we are almost, we are very much on time. I'm given until 4.15. So we have two minutes more. So I will use this two minutes. <laughs> Again, this is timely as well, because before uh, I was approached to be the moderator, I was supposed to give a talk uh, on the My RER. So, I'm, I'm going to be more, I'm luckier in that sense because all right, Mr. Gunn is only given uh, 10 minutes. I would probably, I probably about one hour to talk about um, uh, my ER. It looks like this, Malaysian Renewable um, Roadmap. All right, so I'll probably for the international players, all right, um, I will be sharing the uh, uh, local, regulatory framework, you know, what uh, the authorities have been doing right now, what are the challenges, um, how the Malaysian uh, government are looking at uh, managing these uh, challenges. So I have more time uh, <laughs> than what Mr. Gunn has. I'm, I'm, sp I'm sure Mr. Gunn would do a better job, but you know, uh, yes, um, if um, anybody's uh, free, possibly on the 24th, uh, or 26th of January, uh, please uh, check uh, Ramat Lim's uh, uh, website. Uh, yeah, uh, we have our webinar dedicated on the Malaysian uh, Renewable Energy uh, Roadmap.
anybody interested at all. Yeah. And I think um, if there are, hang on, yeah, I'm not very sure whether the other, can we get a copy of uh, the presentation? Yes, and you have it. It's been a long, long time. Yes, I think <laughs> we'll get in touch with the, uh, we'll get in touch with uh, uh, the organizer. All right, and I think, um, uh, thank you very much, the panelists, for a very detailed, uh, very useful uh, presentation. Um, I'll, um, uh, Shihan? Yeah, I yeah, think, hi. Um, it's time for Kia. Yeah, thank you, Camilla, and thanks again, everyone, for such an exciting discussion. And uh, last but not least, we have one more plenary speech given by Mr. King Lu Chang. He's from Jinko Sola. So, Mr. King, please share your screen. Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, introduction. Can you see my slide? Yeah, yeah, looks good. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Chen and uh, I'm, I come from Jingo Solar, one of the largest and most uh, innovative solar, ma uh, solar model manufacturer in the world. And our company distributes uh, the TV module product and our solution and uh, service to the diversified internationally uh, customer around the world, included uh, utility scale, CNI scale, and residential customer around the world. And uh, Zingo Solar is the number one shipment for the uh, for consecutive years. Uh, we deliver more than 70 gigawatt PV panel uh, to the global customer, and we took uh, more than 14% market share around the world. And uh, at the moment, uh, Jinko Solar uh, has the capacity of uh, more than 31 gigawatt of mono wafer, uh, 19 gigawatt of uh, solar cells, and more than 36 gigawatt of the solar module. Uh, in my presentation, it's at uh, 32 gigawatts because it's the data end of 2020. But uh, as of uh, September 2021, uh, we have uh, uh, module capacity up to 36 gigawatt and we have uh, more than um, uh, we have uh, 12 production facility around the world include our factory in florida usa malaysia china and in uh, another one in vietnam Guangling province in vietnam and the rest uh, we have uh, 10 factory in china included uh, wafer factory solar cell factory and pv module factories we also uh, have our service center in more than 20, 30 countries around the world. Yes, uh, and Jingo Shola took uh, almost uh, the, the number one market share in the, the, the most major market in the world, like U uh, USA, uh, Vietnam, Japan, uh, Germany, Australia, and uh, India, the new emerging market, very big market in uh, Asia. There are some uh, photo and it makes up uh, our uh, production facilities in China, uh, in USA, Malaysia, and Vietnam. I will uh, go very fast uh, uh, to introduce uh, next to our product. You know that uh, Jinko has built a vertical integrated solar product, uh, included the uh, wafer solar cell module. And besides the PV module, we also developing our new solution like BIPV and energy storage solution. Okay, uh, my, my main topic today is to introduce with you the new uh, generation of the PV panel with it uh, very uh, high efficiencies and can deliver the best LCOE to the uh, uh, solar investor and uh, solar user. As you know that uh, uh, we, are, uh, we, we, we are now using the, uh, in the market, the major product is the uh, monopark half cell technology PV panel. However, uh, monopole half cells, uh, it rig to the selling of the efficiencies. So it's very hard to develop more, uh, better and higher efficiency product with the monopole technology. So that's why we uh, decide to go with the new technology. We call it TOPCON technology and uh, combine with anti-solar cell. So the, the new is uh, about the solar cells. The solar cells uh, we use uh, in the past include the poly type or monotype, uh, P type, P type uh, solar cells. 
which is made from the the base the so the the solar cell with the base is the PV type silicon with its uh, silicon doping with the boron, and now we change to the anti solar cells. Anti solar cell is uh, another kind of solar cell which is uh, used uh, just like the diverse uh, structure. The main difference between the P type and N type is the number of electrons. While uh, P type is uh, uh, doping with the boron to make it uh, one electron less and make the base the layer of the cells uh, positive charge. While the anti silicon uh, we doping with uh, phosphorus, which has uh, one more electron, and then the the base layer of the solar cell will be negative charge. That's why we call it N type. And the different, the main difference between the P type and the N type, as uh, some of the audience uh, may know, when you learn about the, the solar cell technologies, is the uh, LID defect, light induced degradation, because the uh, uh, during the the production process of the P type solar cells, we doping the silicon wafer with the boron, and the boron will combine with the remaining oxygen inside the wafer to perform the boron oxygen complex. And the boron oxygen complex will make a uh, kind of defect, we call it light new degradation. When the, the, the sunlight hit to the solar, solar cells, uh, some electron will, uh, electron will be hit, hit, hit and will be moved out to perform the current. However, some electron and some uh, ion will be absorbed by the boron oxygen complex and it will lead to the loss on the PV, uh, the PV power, the, the solar cell maximum power. So we call it LID defect. This kind of uh, LID defect uh, doesn't happen on N-type uh, N, N layer because uh, N-type we dope it with uh, phosphorus and phosphorus, uh, it doesn't perform any connection with OC inside the solar cell. Okay, and uh, beside the N type, uh, instead of the P type solar cell, we also upgrade our uh, solar cell technology. We call it the top. Uh, Zinco name is the HOT 2.0. It's uh, based on the Topcon technologies. We need uh, uh, mainly uh, the same idea of the puff technologies. We add some more layer, some passivation layer to the solar cells to improve the uh, cell efficiencies. And the most important layer in the topcon technologies is the uh, tunnel outside layer. Topcon means uh, tunnel outside passivation contact. And the tunnel, uh, tunnel outside layer will increase the, the ability of the electron move out from the solar cells. It uh, reduces the resistance loss and also um, it uh, limited the recombination rate of the, the, the electrons. So we will have the higher current and higher voltage panel. That's mean higher P max, and uh, we call uh, that explain why it have higher efficiencies com uh, compared to the monopulse solar cells. And uh, for this new product, we uh, produce at uh, at uh, four version uh, based on the customer demand around the world. We have four version. The smaller version called uh, for uh, for the residential system and maybe the, the commercial system is the uh, 54 half cell and 60 half cell, which is uh, has which had the uh, output power from 400 up to 475. As you make link to the, the old product in monopulse product, is uh, if you need a solar solar panel as of uh, 450 watt peak, you need about uh, 2.2 meter square panel. However, with that uh, new technologies, the length of panel only 1.9 meter, but the uh, output power up to uh, 475 is very high efficiency. And for the uh, CNI scale and utility scale, we have two products, 72 half cell and 78 half cells. And on these two products, we also uh, develop uh, two, two version, uh, monofacial and bifacial, as I told you in, Preview discussion that the bifacial panel it uh, maybe become the new uh, trend in the, in the the recent future because uh, 
the bifacial combined with the tracker will bring uh, about 20 up to 25 percent more energy use combined uh, compared to monofacial. So that's improved a lot in terms of the LCOE and IRR of the project. So for uh, 72 half cells, uh, normally uh, for monopuck, it will be about uh, 535 up to 540 watt peak, but uh, on N-type uh, top con technologies, it will be uh, 560 up to 565. And the biggest version of 2.4 meter length, it will be uh, more than 600 watt peak. And our product advantage, the most important is the first year degradation at 1%. And, uh, compared to the normal p type is 2%. And we can uh, apply 30 years power warranty compared to uh, 25 year uh, power warranty of uh, p type So we have five years longer. And of course, with the lower linear degradation on normal type just 0 0.55, but on this product, we have uh, 0 0.4% per, uh, percent linear degradation. The second one is the uh, temperature coefficient. As you may know that uh, the temperature coefficient of the P-type product is uh, 0 0.35, 0 0.35. But uh, in this new product, we provide it 0.30%. It much uh, lower than the normal P-type. So new product will have, uh, as uh, you can see my table comparison table here, in the same condition, the P-type will lost due to temperature more than the N-type, about 12 watt peak what big for every 600 panel so if you have a 60 megawatt if you have 60 megawatt solar farm you will lose uh, 1.2 megawatt uh, megawatt dc capacity due to temperature compared to the uh, end type it's a very important uh, very important value for the the hot countries and tropical country like in Southeast asia especially in malaysia and vietnam yeah and another advantage uh, is for bifacial panel. For the bifacial panel for uh, in our N-type product, it uh, has it has a bifacial factor up to thirty five percent. Why this value on normal N-type just seventy percent? Thus, uh, it can improve a lot on the power gain of the rear size, rear size of the bifacial panel, especially uh, reflect in the the tracker system. And another is to enhance the reliability of the panel. Uh, according to the IEC test, uh, we saw uh, we see that the end type all have the better uh, better uh, degradation value than normal P type. We also have some other technical advantages. Uh, and uh, if you want to uh, find out more, we can uh, 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 contact Jinko to, to get the data sheet and the brochure of the product to understand more about uh, our product. And uh, one of the, the, the most important thing here, I also want that to emphasize, even though we you know have very limited time, is uh, 16 burst bar. You know that uh, normally uh, in the market right now, most of the panel is nine or 10 burst bar, but the Jinko will provide on this new product, the 16 burst bar. This improved a lot in terms of the energy loss and also micro -correct. So uh, totally we will improve about 3% in terms of the energy generation of the project. Yeah, from that all of the technical advantages. And uh, uh, we also uh, put uh, all of the, this technical advantage into the LCOE analysis. And we see that uh, over 21 years of PPA in Malaysia, the energy use of anti new product will be about 5% higher than normal type, normal P type. Of course, it also have some BOS cost advantage because uh, with the higher efficiency, with the higher output power, you save more uh, mounting costs, uh, cable costs, and uh, labor costs, and O&M costs. So we call it the uh, uh, BOS cost and OPEC cost. So we'll lead to the uh, lower LCOE, lower LCOE and higher IRR for the project, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, I, I make the, the comparison and I see that 605 even better than uh, 565. And uh, of course, N-type all the way better than B-type in terms of the LCOE and higher IRR for sure. Then also, uh, it will be very good combination with the inverter as uh, Spencer already told you that uh, 
the, now the new inverter generation are uh, compatible with uh, our new PV generation. So it's uh, absolutely no problem. Okay, and uh, I will finish my presentation here because uh, the panel will have no problem with the, any kind of the mounting system, rooftop or tracker or 2P tracker. Yeah. Any uh, demand of the Jinko solar panel, for, uh, please uh, visit our website at uh, worldwideweb.jinkosolar.com and for customer service, which I'm in charge of uh, Southeast Asia market, you can email me here. Thank you very good. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you on the next. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kindu, for your presentation. And if you have any questions for Jingo Sola, please do uh, contact Mr. Kindu uh, through his email. And uh, again, big thanks to all speakers for joining today's webinar and sharing your valuable comments for this market. And special thanks, uh, thanks to Ms. Camila Kasim for moderating the panel discussion. And again, we will share the recording and PowerPoint slides used of today's webinar to all of your registration email by the end of next week. And should you have any other questions, please do feel free to contact our team. Uh, through the email address showing on the slides right now. And uh, if you have any questions for our speakers, please do, uh, do also contact them through their uh, contact info. And uh, please also make sure to follow Solar Talks webinar on LinkedIn to get our first-hand webinar update information. And thanks again, everyone, for attending the webinar today. We will see you next time. Thank you.